Kip Anderson just released a new documentary, Christ Spiracy, and today we're talking all about it. We're going to discuss whether it's believable, if it makes me want to become a Christian, if it was worth the $20 I paid to see it, and most importantly, if this time Kip has finally gone too far. We'll start with a brief summary and then get into my thoughts, but first a little bit about my background and why I'm glad that this movie exists. Earlier today, I had coffee with a British vegan, and I told her I was planning on seeing Christ Spiracy, and she she said that she was confused as to why they made this documentary in the first place. She could not understand why it would possibly matter what Jesus did when we're thinking about how we live our lives. I told her that she doesn't understand America. Christianity is so important to the United States, especially in the South where I've spent most of my life. That's why I loved the beginning of Christ Spiracy where we're introduced to Cameron, a gospel musician who's having a crisis of faith because he's struggling to understand how you can eat animals in a spiritual way. This documentary centers around that question, is there a spiritual way to kill an animal? How would Jesus kill an animal? Kip and Cameron go on a religious quest to find the answer, and they take us not just through Christianity, but into Buddhism, Hinduism, Islam, Judaism, and more. They explored how different religions view animal sacrifice, they interviewed Southern evangelicals, and went literally all over the world. There's a long discussion on carnism, speciesism, and they go deeper into Jesus's life, Christianity, and what exactly happened at the Temple of Din. Temple of Din? Din? The temple where Jesus flipped over the tables and freaked out. Now we're gonna get into the spoilers, so if you don't want that, then don't watch this. Eventually, Kip and Cameron find out that Jesus of Nazareth was a misnomer because Nazareth wasn't actually a place. It was a group of people, the Nazarenes, and they were known for being against animal slaughter and being vegetarian. The other big reveal was that there was a mistranslation with the den of thieves. We've all heard that Jesus was mad about the exchange of money at the temple, but Kip found that there was a mistranslation. The word shouldn't have been thieves, it should have been violent one or murderer. Basically, Jesus wasn't upset about money changing hands, he was upset about the mass slaughter of animals. They go to the temple in Jerusalem and find that there was a mass drainage system, which is where the blood would flow from the animal sacrifice into the river. The film ends with a discussion on spirituality and how vegans have bigger compassion centers in our brains and basically makes the case that compassion is good and, and all that. Now let's get into my analysis. I did not expect to have such an intense emotional reaction to this documentary. Cowspiracy and Seaspiracy were easy to watch, but this one was a lot. I'm not sure if it's because I've been in a vegan bubble lately, but some of the things meat eaters were saying really got to me. There's a scene where they interview Buddhist monks, and the first tenet of Buddhism is to not harm sentient individuals. The monks all agree with it and say it's such an important principle and that they would never harm anyone, including animals. Which made me think that they're all vegan, or at least vegetarian. But then they go on to say that they can eat meat because they're not the ones killing the animal. I felt frustrated by the ways they justified their animal consumption. It seems pretty obvious to me that if you pay someone to slaughter an animal, then you should bear at least some, if not all, of that responsibility. Then there were all these evangelicals laughing at vegetarians and saying that eating meat is totally fine and there's no doubt about it in the scripture, even though there clearly is. In the beginning of the documentary, Kip does a little intro where he says that there is some footage of animal cruelty, but no footage of animals actually being killed. I thought nothing of this. I've been to slaughterhouses, I've seen Dominion, so I thought that this would not be hard to watch. I was wrong. This footage actually really got to me. While there were no animals killed, there were animals in terrible condition, a lot of animals crying, and there was one scene where there was this mass slaughter of cows and there was this field afterward and there were just hundreds of dead bodies. It looked like a battlefield of dead soldiers, but instead of soldiers, it was cows. It was really awful. Another heart-wrenching scene was this kid who went hunting with his grandfather for the first time. He shoots a deer and his grandfather congratulates him, but the kid's talking about how he just felt really sad. He says that he kind of wished that he hadn't done it, but he knows that it's a tradition and he doesn't want to upset 
his grandfather. Seeing that deer just killed by a kid for no reason, just because an adult wanted to teach him how to be violent, just really drove home how horrible our society is toward animals, and it just really upsets me sometimes. There were scenes of kids finding out that they were eating animals and saying that they didn't want to do it. Of course, their parents talked them into it and said it was fine and all the excuses came out, animals eat other animals and whatnot. But the movie really drives home that this is societal conditioning. One of the highlights of this movie for me was their explanation of speciesism and carnism. I think if I were a meat eater watching this, I probably wouldn't have been persuaded by any of the religious arguments, even if I was religious, but the discussion on speciesism might have gotten to me. Melanie Joy is there, and it's essentially Carnism 101, but it's just explained really well. They talk about dogs versus cows and how all animals feel pain and suffer, and this may be a minor detail, but I think it's an important one. They get a Holocaust survivor to make the Holocaust comparison, and they get a black guy to make the slave comparison, which makes these comparisons go over way better. That's why when you watch my videos, I usually compare animal rights to women's rights. Messengers matter. The section on India was also a highlight. Although people in India claim to worship cows, they're also the largest exporter of beef. Kip and Cam follow this truck that's smuggling cows across the border, and of course they report it to the local authorities, but the local authorities are in on it, so they don't do anything, of course. Halfway through this movie, I felt really hopeless. Like, this problem is just too big and that there's not really anything we can do about it and that everyone's in on it you know the corporations the governments and now the church sometimes i just feel like we're never going to win a huge metric by which i judge documentaries is their ability to manipulate my emotions and christ spiracy does this very well but what about all the jesus stuff is it actually believable Somewhat. I can definitely see how they got to certain conclusions, but honestly, some of the way it was presented went a bit fast. And it seems like they may have been trying to move quickly so you didn't have time to process it and were more likely to buy into their narrative. Am I going to become Christian? Probably not. Maybe if there was rock solid evidence that Jesus was vegan and also if you didn't have to believe some of the stuff that you have to believe in order to be Christian, then I'd be open to it. I'm definitely open to having some sort of religious experience, but I haven't gotten there yet. As far as if this documentary went too far, I actually think that it did. They presented things in a way that made them seem totally unambiguous. But there's actually a lot of room for interpretation. For example, they said John the Baptist was definitely a vegetarian, but most scholars agree that he ate locusts. As far as Nazareth not being a place, that also seemed unbelievable to me. I guess there's a chance that Wikipedia could be wrong, but the research I did afterwards suggested that it was a real place before Jesus existed. Einstein also wasn't vegetarian until a couple years before the end of his life. There are many instances of him eating meat, and I know I'm nitpicking here, but when you're trying to be persuasive, details like this matter. There's a scene where they're driving through India, and it's obvious that they were driving at a normal speed, but they sped up the footage and added sound effects to make it seem like a high-speed car chase. Now, I know this was probably done to keep it more entertaining and exciting, but it felt a little dishonest to me. Another issue is that they make some of these claims as if they're groundbreaking or original, but some Christians have been making the case for ethical vegetarianism for centuries, using a lot of these same arguments. I also have a hard time believing it was some sort of cover-up or conspiracy. I think it's more likely that there were probably a few vegetarians and most people ignored them because people don't care about animals, just like they don't today. The last section didn't work for me either because they were implying that spirituality is veganism and veganisms are more spiritually pure. I want to make it clear that I am just as morally bankrupt as ever and becoming vegan has not changed that. I'm not a hippie and I don't want vegans to be portrayed that way. All that being said, I absolutely loved this documentary. It held my attention the entire time, the story was super compelling, and the interviews were really good. It was better than Cowspiracy, Seaspiracy, and I don't think I've seen What the Health, but it was probably better than that too. It was definitely worth the money and you should see it as soon as you can. Earlier I mentioned that I felt really hopeless halfway through the film, but by the end I felt kind of okay. I feel like we can create a better future for animals, and if you're a Christian watching this, then seeing this documentary might be your first step. Thanks for watching today. If you like this, hit that like button. If you want to check out my free vegan outreach starter guide, click the link in the description, and as always, I will see you next Friday.